Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. It's good to see you all. We're ready to resume the trial. Uh, the state can call their next witness. Call Brad Shumpert. Sir, if you will, um, will you please state your full name and spell it for our court reporter? She's seated in front of you. Good morning. My name is Brad Shumpert. That's S H U M P E R T. And I'm employed with the Cobb County Police Department. What do you do specifically with Cobb County PD? Currently, I'm assigned to the evidence unit. As of last August, I was assigned to the homicide unit as a crime scene technician. And I'm post certified for the state of Georgia as a crime scene technician. We've heard a little bit about posts from one of our other officers, that is police officer standardized training, is that correct? That's correct. So you are a post certified police officer, in, in other words, you have arrest powers, correct? No, post certified crime scene tech. Crime scene tech, I, I apologize. And um, why don't you explain for the jury what the difference is between a crime scene tech versus a detective or a uniformed officer? Uh, the difference is I'm tasked with going out and processing and collecting evidence for our department. Um, my current assignment, or our prior assignment was with the homicide unit. Our Crimes Against Persons Unit, we are tasked with an, a, uh, going and assisting detectives who are working the scenes by collecting and processing evidence there. And are different scenes handled differently? They are. Can you please explain generally what kind of things uh, might dictate how you process a, a scene, whether it's outdoors, indoors, um, just some of the factors that you have to consider as a crime scene investigator? Right, uh, depending on what kind of crime was committed. Um, we investigate murders and uh, rapes and robberies and depending on what location are there we're all well equipped and trained to handle all the uh, factors going into a uh, process in each and every one of those scenes. Now in terms of processing scene would that also include taking photographs and videos on occasion? It would. And um, do you have special equipment that you're given through Cobb County Police that allows you to do this documentation process? That's correct. And um, how long have you been working with Cobb County Police in total? It will be going on nine years coming up in a February. And back in uh, September of 2014, where specific, excuse me, in June of 2014, what specific unit were you assigned to? Our Crimes Against Persons unit, which consists of our, some major felonies unit, which consists of the homicide squad and robbery squad, and we investigate all uh, felonies, crimes against persons, basically. We had some discussions very early on, even in jury selection, about the differences between uh, what we see on TV sometimes in terms of CSI versus the realities of crime scenes investigation. Can you explain a little bit for the jury the differences between what you really do versus what they might see on TV in these fictional programs? Well, basically, you have real life and you have TV life, and they are much different from what you will see on TV. We don't. We still go about doing things a, uh, in a way of manner of processing that's been going on for a number of years now. We don't have any magical hocus pocus things that we can just throw out there and things we can get back and, and then 24 hours we have somebody in custody or have an item that's processed to lead us to that. It is much the same way we've been processing for, for a number of years. Just technology's gotten better with cameras and documentation tools, but other than that, a, uh, it's pretty much go about the same way. Uh, I want to ask you about June the 18th of 2014. Were you working on that date? I was. And did you have some involvement in this case involving uh, decedent Cooper Harris? I did. I, um, just a little after 4 o'clock, I, uh, I was contacted by our uh, lieutenant at the time. And not to confuse both counsel and the jury, I may refer back to this individual as a captain or lieutenant. It's not to confuse, but people have gotten rank and 
Okay, good morning, and want to get a thumbs up as soon as contacting me by phone. You ready? Got it, 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 got it. Very good. Good morning. So we have started early this morning. All of your agencies are hard at work and looking at what has happened. The first thing we did was get briefed from the National Weather Center to find out how the storm had changed overnight. It did slow down. It did move somewhat. Um, they made it very clear that that could move back. And so we are not in Cobb County, Georgia. It is in Cobb County. And give us a general description about where that location is in, within Cobb County. Um, it would be in the southeastern corner of Cobb County. Cobb, Cobb County borders Fulton County, which is where the city of Atlanta is at. Um, it's also where the new Brave Stadium is going. It's where 285 comes in. Um, it is an area where there are lots of retail stores and shopping and also high-rise business areas. I've driven around Brunswick for my first visit here and it would be like going by the mall over a, uh, in Brunswick where there's some shops around there. The Target area would something look about like that. There's lots of shops, there's lots of restaurants, there's lots of people. Just take that what y'all have here and add 200,000 people and that's kind of like the location of where that's at. <laughs> Fair to say it's not a rural location. It's not, it's not a rural location by any means. Okay. And um, we do have some rural um, locations in Cobb County in the Northwest Corridor, for, for example, but this is not one of them. This is not one of those areas. Okay. And um, this is actually near a major interstate as well. It's very near uh, I-75, right. is that correct? That's correct. I-75 and I-285, it's a major corridor, lots of people. All right. And um, you've had an opportunity to look at some aerial photographs, uh, is that correct? That's correct. This is State's Exhibit uh, 228. Looking at 228, you and I had an opportunity to look at this and discuss this earlier, is that correct? That's correct. Um, looking at the State's Exhibit 228, is this a fair and accurate aerial depiction of the location that you described, Acres Mill Road? Yes, it would be. Okay. And um, there's several other locations that are marked here as well, is that correct? That's correct. But this um, encompasses the area that you responded to um, where, where this particular vehicle was, is that, is that correct? That's correct. You can see it on the top of this? That's correct. It's interstate 228. Any objection? No objection. Admitted. Okay. I'm get you down in front of the jury for just a second. on the easel. Let me step back a little bit. Hope you all can see that best you're able. You'll have opportunity to see it closer back in the jury room, I suspect. Um, looking at 228, what am I pointing to here? What is uh, um, marked here on the top of 228? This is where uh, Uncle Matty has pizza along the strip mall off Acres Mill. Uh, this is Highway 41, uh, U.S. Highway 41, and Acres Mill across that, and this shopping center would be at that corner. Okay. And um, specifically, there's a little turn lane that goes into this area off of Acres Mill where Uncle Matt, Matt is, is marked, correct? That's correct. And then up here, is this the Cinco's restaurant that's also located in that area? It would be. Okay, we've got some photographs I'm going to show you in just a little bit um, of that Cinco's. Does this have a, any sort of deck area that allows patrons to, to visit and eat outdoors? I believe they have an elevated patio on top of the restaurant. Just so we can get our bearings, some of these jurors might be more familiar with Cobb than others. Is this Cumberland Mall? Yes, it would. Okay. And then we have some other things that are marked here. So before we leave 228, I want to ask you about those areas as well. Are you familiar with the Home Depot, what we call the Treehouse uh, Office? I am. And in fact, we'll get to it in a minute, but as, as part of your response in this particular case, did you actually travel there on this date to photograph a vehicle belonging to Leanna Harris? I did. So it, I'm pointing to an area down here that will be the lower left side of 228 as you face it. What is marked here? That would be the treehouse office. This is the Home Depot treehouse. And then 
finally, up here to the upper right side, are you familiar with this area as well? I am. And describe for the jury what's marked on the upper right side. It's the uh, Parkway Point movie theater, and I believe it also has like an elevated parking deck beside it as well. So this is a movie theater to the upper right side of this area. Is that correct? correct? To take this chronologically, your first task was to respond to and process a scene near the Uncle Mattia, is that correct? That's correct. Describe, if you will, uh, the scene as you found it when you arrived at approximately um, <coughs> about 524? Correct. Can you describe that scene for the jury? Um, when I arrived, a uh, that area where you would turn in off Acres Mill behind the, uh, the shopping area where the Uncle Matteo's Pizza Place was already cordoned off uh, by responding officers. Um, detectives from my unit, the like Crimes Against Persons Homicide Unit, had arrived and they, uh, there were a number of marked patrol cars there as well. And uh, police personnel on and about the area. And they, uh, just to the south of there, that road was blocked off and I uh, observed where they had a sheet trying to cover up. So you couldn't see up the road to provide some, a, uh, um, basically some privacy of the scene. I uh, also believe that media was already a, a showing up. Like I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's Atlanta. And a, uh, media was already showing up and they've already kind of blocked it off with a sheet. Okay, now um, can you describe to the jury what the, what the process is when you first arrive on the scene? And in particular, I want to focus on what we call a walkthrough. Right. The, the first thing I do would be getting with whoever is the scene commander for my unit. Um, then I conduct a walkthrough with them. I will discuss what is going on, what do I need to do, and ask them the questions. <clears throat> they, uh, and they'll provide me with the answers. Uh, Lieutenant Farrell says we have a, a child that's deceased. A, uh, there was a silverish blue color Hyundai Tucson parked just to the outside of that, in that parking lane, um, said there's a deceased a, a male a child and that I should go and photograph and document the scene as it, sit, as it sat and, a, uh, and then wait for the medical examiner to get there and then a, uh, assist him with also photographs of the deceased child. Let's talk a little bit about you know, your role with Cobb County Police Department versus the medical examiner's role in death investigations. Can you articulate what the distinction is? Right. The medical examiner's office has jurisdictions over the body. Um, the investigator comes out, they're the ones who do a, uh, field observations, and they're the ones who actually touch the body, maneuver the body, look at the body for defects, for signs of injury, for trauma, and the actual body is turned over to them. We're there just to process the scene itself and around it. Do you oftentimes work in conjunction with the medical examiner's office, though, in documenting a particular scene? We do. In any, any death investigations, a, uh, we uh, assist them by documenting the scene by basically taking photos and videos if needed. And um, do you know who Investigator Martin Jackson is? I do. And explain how you know Martin Jackson. Uh, he's a co-worker. A, uh, he's a, uh, he works in the medical examiner's office. He's a field investigator. Um, just to the number of volumes of calls that we work, we work together quite often. And um, when he comes out to a scene such as this one, whose responsibility is to take custody of a, a scene such as Cooper Harris? The medical examiner's office is, takes custody of the um, deceased. While that is going on, do you in any way document, and did you document in this case, um, Cooper Harris's condition in any way, shape, or form? Yes, as a, uh, the medical examiner's a, uh, um, investigator does a field observation. A, um, I'll go and take photos as he wants me to do them, or he, he or she wants me to do them. He'll maneuver the body. He'll say, "Take a photo here. Take a photo of this, and so forth." And that's how that works. Okay. And um, I want to talk about the weather conditions that day. Can you please describe for the jury before we get to photographs and video the weather conditions on that date when you responded um, a little bit after five? Uh, it's hot June Georgia day. Uh, hot, humid. Um, that day, thunderstorms were brewing off to the west, and a, uh, we saw fit to a, uh, put over shelter because we didn't know when those pop-up thunderstorms were going to happen. 
when you say shelter, what specifically did you do and what did you have that you brought with you to the scene to assist in giving some shelter while you documented what was going on? We erected a uh, pop-up tent shelter. Um, got four, four legs and a tent on top of it. Placed it over the body and then I wrapped a, a tarp around there to keep people who could see it, a uh, media or, or anybody else around the area to actually see down a, uh, to where uh, the decedent lay. When you first arrived on the scene, um, was the defendant, Justin Ross Harris, already been, had he already been detained? Yeah, I, I just recall pa probably passing Piper's patrol car and, and him sitting in the, in the back as I was coming in. We saw some photographs yesterday of Piper, Piper's patrol vehicle. Um, it was parked a little bit off from the scene, further up from the vehicle, uh, I guess if you're standing at the Tucson facing forward, it, it would have been in front of the Tucson. Is that where you saw Piper's patrol vehicle when you no, arrived? No, that, that, those cars were already moved and I guess going to leave out that exit. Okay, and um, did, did you have any contact with the defendant at all? No. Did you see him at all? I may have seen a glance as I walked past the uh, patrol car, but th that's all. I want to talk about young Cooper Harris. While you were on the scene, before you began the documenting process, did, did you confirm in any way that he was deceased? Other than a, uh, asking responding officers a, uh, where the body was, a, and they said lying under a sheet on the pavement, that was my confirmation. I got it. And um, you did not actually put the sheet on Cooper, is that correct? No, it was already laying on him as I arrived. At some point, that sheet was removed so that um, you could take some photographs and some videos, is that correct? That's correct. And who actually removed that sheet such that you were able to do that? Investigator Jackson with the Emmys office. When you arrived. Elaborate to go into what I saw. A, uh, Please, yeah, just describe the vehicle if you could. The vehicle was silver in color, bluish, uh, yeah, I believe Hyundai Tucson, a small like, crossover type SUV. Um, I recall it having a Georgia license plate, a, a Roll Tide Alabama, a, a club tag. Um, I could see clearly see a red and black, a um, rear facing car seat that was situated in the back seat. There was only one back seat, it didn't have a third row. A, uh, it was red and black in color. You can clearly see it walking around. A, uh, anything else about the vehicle, there's some items in the front seat that I saw, and a, uh, anything else about it was unremarkable. There's no wreckage or anything like that. From the exterior of the vehicle, I want to ask from two different vantage points. From standing in the door frame and peering in, I'm talking about the open driver's side door. Right. Standing in that open door frame, could you look inside the vehicle and see that red car seat that you just described? Yes. Uh, I now want to ask you about um, the windows of the vehicle. Um, but admittedly, were some of the windows more tinted than others? The rear window, a, uh, facing out, the rear window was darker than Time Lieutenant a, a Farrell a, a wanted the vehicle towed back to our processing facilities located at Cobb Police Headquarters. So to be perfectly clear, that was not your responsibility in this case. Somebody else actually processed the interior of the vehicle. The inside of the vehicle, yes. It was later on that night, early that morning. Before the vehicle was processed, though, did you document its exact condition as you found it when you arrived on the scene right. and other officers arrived on the scene? Right. Everything was documented as it sat as I arrived. Did you ever go in the vehicle? No. Were you able to take your camera and the video, though, and at least videotape inside the vehicle from the open door? That is correct. I want to ask you, um, 
about markings that uh, were used to mark the placement of the vehicle. Right. Did you do anything prior to the vehicle being moved so that we could mark and document exactly where the vehicle was parked at the time uh, that, that you found it? Right. I chalked the tires using a uh, orange fluorescent spray paint uh, just to document where it was at. Um, when I arrived, I didn't know any more information about what happened or what occurred. So that was also to do in case by any means they take the body back to the medical center and it, and it could be possibly a uh, hit by a car or anything like that. That was over overabundance of caution. So in case our a, uh, traffic unit can come out and investigate it, I went ahead and did that. Are you and familiar with the FARO technology, F-A-R-O? That's correct. I'm trained on the, on the FARO 3D scanner unit. Okay, and the 3D scanner unit, we'll, we'll hear some testimony about that later. It, it, is that a device that allows you to map a crime scene using 3D technology? It is. It's, a, uh, it's basically what it is. It's a, uh, it documents by points of uh, length and origin and a, it brings data into a, uh, a computer and, and builds a 3D model of what you're trying to, a, uh, to produce. In this particular case, you didn't use the 3D scanner, correct? No, we did not have them pro when this occurred. You're, you're aware, though, that somebody came back out and used the 3D scanner? Right, I'm, I am. Okay. Now, um, the vehicle having been removed from, from that scene, would you still be able to see the markings where the exact placement of the vehicle would be? be? You, you would be, unless the weather would have rode them off, but for a long time they were there. Okay. Um, inside the vehicle, as you stood in that doorway and looked in the, in the, the open vehicle, what did you see in the passenger seat? I recall seeing a, uh, a Home Depot bag. A, uh, I don't know what was in it, a, a, uh, and it looks like a briefcase was on the floorboard on the front passenger side. Okay. And um, did, did you actually go in that bag or go inside um, the, the little briefcase that was in there? Or, or again, was that left to somebody else who's processing the vehicle? No, I didn't make entry into the car. We didn't have a search warrant, and that was processed later on. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Cooper Harris's condition. Did, did Martin Jackson from the medical examiner's office arrive exactly with you or did he come a little bit later? He arrived a little bit later. When investigator Jackson from the medical examiner's office arrived on the scene, um, did he begin an assessment of Cooper? He did. And were you present when that happened? I was present. Can you describe the condition of Cooper as you observed it as Martin Jackson was um, removing uh, the blanket, the tarp that was on top of Cooper. What did you see? I um, observed it was a young child, toddler aged, um, lying on his back on the on the on the pavement, uh, knees slightly bent, arms to his side. Um, lividity, which is red blood cells seeping through the serum in the blood. That when you lie deceased on on your back for a while, the gravity will pull that down, so you'll have a discoloration purple bluish brewing, uh, bruising, a, uh, what I can describe it as. A, uh, you can, that was present. Um, he had some scratches, like appeared on the face. Um, he was wearing a little, a little shirt that had bicycles on it and little tennis shoes. Okay. Was he in rigor? In other words, was his body stiff when you observed it? Yeah, he was, he was noticeably to me in rigor. And what about the color of his skin other than the lividity you saw once he was turned over? It, it was pale. And um, there are some photographs that you took of Cooper in this condition that you've just described, correct? That's correct. I including when he was turned over. I noticed there was some discoloration on, on, on his back, so it was, it was wet. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and um, were you able to get close enough that you could you know, actually s smell Cooper? But it, to me, I, I would describe the smell as, you know, hot, musty, uh, urine-soaked diaper. You know, if you leave a diaper in a car, all day long in the heat. That's the noticeable smell to me. And did you actually take some photographs of, of his wet back and, and his wet shorts to, to document? Right. On, on the back side, along his uh, shorts and shirt were, were, were noticeably wet. In, in terms of some of the locations that we've described here, is this a highly congested area off of Acres Mill Road? It's an extremely highly congested area. And. Um, <clears throat> The specific area that you found Cooper, how, how close was he to the vehicle when you arrived? Um, I did some a, uh, approximate just cursory me measurements and uh, I measured from the corner of the front open a uh, door panel, not inside, but the outside. It was three, three feet six inches from the door to the center of his chest. So he was pretty close to the vehicle where, where you found him, correct? 
Right. I want to talk about the other areas around this, though. You already <coughs> talked about it being a hot day. D did you get close enough to the pavement to feel how it was? I did. I, I crawled around the car um, when I was measuring it, and, and I was down there, and, and it's hot Georgia pavement. All right. Were there other areas around the vehicle other than the pavement that Cooper could have been placed? As a professional or, or, or as, a, as a human being or a father, you ask me. I'm asking you, did you observe other areas other than pavement where Cooper yeah, could have yeah. been placed outside that vehicle? Yeah, there are many areas that I would have taken a child and placed them. I want to talk a little bit about um, the photos that you took. You and I had an opportunity to look at some photographs on several occasions now, correct? Correct. And I'm going to start by showing you thumb drive mark is 227. In fact, this morning, just to confirm, we looked at the thumb drive 227 to confirm that these had some photographs of, uh, of this particular scene, correct? That's correct. Um, there's also some other scenes that are included on here as, as well, but we'll start with this scene. Does this contain fair and accurate depictions of the crime scene that you've just described for this jury? Yes, it would. There were two other areas that you were asked to process on that date, is that correct? That's correct. One of those areas is actually depicted here on States 228. That's Leanna Harris's vehicle, correct? That's correct. Are there also fair and accurate depictions of that vehicle from your processing on that date? That's correct. And then later on that day, were you also asked to go to defendant's apartment to process and document that area? That's correct. Having looked at 227, does this have fair and accurate depictions of, of that as well? Yes, it would. The actual hard copies of the photographs we've just described. Some of which were tendered yesterday. <clears throat> yesterday as was four. of defendant's vehicle and the scene as you first saw when you arrived? Yes, they would be. Okay, so I'm going to tender states 1 through 14. I know that includes some that were already tendered yesterday, but now in abundance of caution, we'll just lay the foundation again. No objection. Okay. Next set of photographs we refer you to. A photograph of defendant's vehicle, and we'll go 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Those last three were tendered and admitted yesterday, but you can now see those. 22. Are those fair and accurate depictions of defendant's vehicle that you just described? Yes, they would be. Are those fair and accurate depictions of the exterior and interior of the vehicle as you observed it uh, using camera and video? Yes, they would be. Next, I'm going to ask about the car seat, looking at 33 all the way through 41. Looking at those, those fair and accurate depictions of the car seat you've just described, photographed from the exterior of the vehicle? Yes, they would be. about Cooper Harris.
through 50. 51 was tendered and admitted yesterday. And then 52, those fair and accurate depictions of Cooper Harris, both covered and uncovered as he observed him. Yes, they would be. And then states 53. including state 70, are these photographs of Cooper Harris as Martin Jackson is taking custody of his body? Yes, they would be. States 71, including 76, those fair and accurate depictions of some of the Levitian and other areas that you observed. That's correct. States 77, Through 80, similarly, as he's being processed for those fair and accurate depictions of Trooper Harris. Yes, they would be. And then 81. Through 88, fair and accurate depictions of his head and neck. Yes, they would be. Stage 89. 96 fair and accurate depictions of his head and his abdomen. Yes, they would. So I'm now tender as well, states 15 through 96. some videos as well <coughs> of the scene, is that correct? That's correct. And um, I'm going to show you states 204 and 205. Uh, looking at these discs, 204, is this the first video of the scene that you took? Yes. And in fact, looking at the disc marks 204, we watched this in my office in Cobb County and I had you initial it so that you would recognize this as being a fair and accurate copy of that recording, correct? That's correct. Similarly, uh, states 205, video number two, you watched this in my office in Cobb County so that we can confirm that this is an accurate copy of the video that you took, correct? That's correct. Um, the first video, is this a video of the, essentially the exterior of the vehicle and walking around that vehicle? That's correct. And then the second video, is, is this a video that you took personally as Investigator Jackson was investigating the death of Cooper Harris? That's correct. Tender states 204 and 205 as well. Sure. <coughs> yeah, while I do the witnesses briefly on the videos, there's two different videos. They are one is of the scene and the other is from the house. Is that correct? Right. The, okay. It was a continuation from when I arrived, the uh, scene, and then the search warrant after. I'm, let me be clear too. These two discs are only the scene. I have not tendered, nor do I plan to tender the apartment. Okay, that, that's what I was thinking. The on the scene, what's depicted on one as opposed to the other? What's is there something different depicted between one video DVD and the other DVD? No, the just, scene. just a pause. I'm sorry. Just a pause, and from when I first got there for the first scene to walk through, and then when the investig medical investigator got there. We did another one as he did his first. Just two different times that same. Day. That's correct. I got you. All right. No objection. Thank you. Admitted. On a 227, the thumb drive, this morning you were present with me when we transferred copies of that video to 227 so we can confirm and play it through the technology we have here in the courtroom. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. I'm going to tender 227 as well. And that is of everything or just the video? It's, it's everything, including the videos. So it's all photographs, video. It's also be Leanna Harris's car and the apartment. No objection. So with that, I'm going to publish with the court's permission 227 mm -hmm. and the specific items that have been discussed. Okay. I think what we're going to do. Leave it right about there. I 
leave this here? Can everybody see? Uh, uh, oh, okay. Would, would it be all right if I leave it here and not? Yes. Oh. This may be easier. Shumpert, if you step down with me, and let's go through <coughs> some of these, okay? I'm going to have you stand over this side so that neither one of us are blocking the photos. It's a touch screen, so be careful about tapping it. But I may ask you some things and we'll use this pointer. All right. State's exhibit number one. Describe to the jury what state's exhibit number one depicts. It is a, uh, of the scene from my point of view where we parked in coming from Acres Mill into the drive. Did I give you the exhibit? I'll refer to him by number to assist you as you go through them. Thank you. Thank you. you had talked about um, a, a restaurant, Matios. Do you see that depicted here on State's Exhibit Number One? Right. This corner of the building is Uncle Matty Al's Pizza, and there's an outside a uh, sitting area that used to be Cherie's right here. Um, up here, this red light it's marked with a specific street. Is that correct? Right. Acres Mill Road. And why is it that you, uh, as a crime scene investigator, want to document things like street signs? Let you know where I'm at. All right, let's go through and take a look at some of these other vantage points. When you first arrived on the scene, you described that it was cordoned off of crime scene tape. Is that accurate? That's accurate. This yellow line that's here, can you describe for the jury what that is? That's crime scene tape, extending east, a uh, southeast, back north, and south again. Um, around the area between Uncle Matty House Pizza and that building right there that's obscured by those uh, uh, Craig Myrtle trees would be Cinco's Mexican restaurant. There are some police officers that are inside this uh, crime scene area, is that correct? That's correct. That's Officer Foley, is that accurate? That's accurate. And then the taller gentleman here, is that Officer Gallimore? That's correct. Were they present on the scene, obviously, when you arrived? <coughs> yes, that's correct. All right, going to State's Exhibit number three, we're just gonna pan through this area. When you initially got to, to the, do you take scene photographs as you observe it from different vantage points so that we make sure to capture everything? I always try to do that. Yes, that would be accurate. As we now have moved to state's exhibit number three, the, the bluish gray silver vehicle that you had described, the Tucson, do you right. see that here in this picture? It's right here. State's exhibit number four, we move closer to that vehicle. Is that the same vehicle by Matios? It is. State's exhibit number five, same officers, correct? That's correct. And is that the vehicle? Yes, it would be. As you get closer to this vehicle, and we'll use five as an example, what's that white object right there? It would be the sheet covering up for the seating, Cooper Harris. Can you see that sheet here in state's exhibit number six? Yeah, you see a small portion of the, uh, the sheet they had just outside the left rear passenger tire. You had talked briefly about um, trying to give some, some privacy and protection from the media. Yeah, on state's exhibit number six, are, are these members of the media right here who actually got cameras up? That's correct. Um, be, because of that, did, did you or members of Cobb Police Office, uh, did they, they erect this little sheet to try to block right. some of that view? Officers who were already there, I uh, put that sheet up. I uh, protect the viewing area. This is state's exhibit number eight. And looking at the side of the vehicle, um, could, could you see inside the window, particularly the, the, the passenger side window, could you see inside the vehicle when, when you got up close to it? I could. Before we leave, state's exhibit number eight. This, this right here says ITY on the end. Are you familiar with what store that is? I believe that was Sports Authority. Sports Authority. <coughs> This is state's exhibit number 10. We'll skip forward a little bit. Is, is this the first view that we, I think, have been able to see where you can actually see the car door open? That's correct. And you describe this as being which door of that vehicle? The front driver's side door. Is this how you found the vehicle when you arrived on the scene to process it? Yes, it was. Were any other vehicle doors open other than the driver's side? No, they were not. For some of these photographs, we've seen some where uh, Officer Piper had her vehicle. At some point, did she leave that scene as you were processing it? Yes. Did you continue to take photographs after her vehicle left with the defendant? Yes.
This is States Exhibit number 14. What road is this depicted in the upper right of that photograph? Um, Cumberland Parkway. Uh, let's see. For Acres Mill. All right. We're now at States Exhibit number 15. Describe this vantage point and what we can see here in States 15. This vantage point is actually from where they uh, erected a sheet across here looking towards a, uh, um, the vehicle where the decedent lay. There was a, uh, a rock wall that divided the back of the shop and center and Acres Mill Road. Now we can't see Cooper in, in, in this photograph, but we can see where his body is located, correct? Uh, the, the body is located under the white sheet. Skip forward to States Exhibit number 19. Describe what 19 depicts, please. Um, it would be looking, I guess, from the southwest to the north uh, east. Um, looking at this building right here would be Cinco's, the uh, restaurant that had that elevating, elevated a uh, eating area on top of it. This is that, that open area, that deck area that That's you refer correct. to, is that correct? And um, are these windows right here, all the windows to Cinco's eatery as well? I believe they were. And um, about this time of day, so, you know, four or five o'clock, can you describe traffic conditions in Cobb County on a weekday during? during but it, terrible. It's usually bumper to bumper traffic uh, from three to eight o'clock through there. And then we have right here a number of stores that are listed within this that area. You talk about the Sports Authority, is that one of them? Right. Those are just the stores that are listed in that general shopping area, not including the, the many restaurants or other small stores that are there. I'm now at States Exhibit number 20, and looking at States Exhibit number 20, this is a view of, of what? Uh, this is just the overall view of the uh, Hyundai Tucson, uh, uh, showing that the decedent lie there in the sheet. This item you see right here is a, a, a disaster sheet, a, a secondary sheet to cover the, uh, the victim. That was this is Cooper's body underneath the white sheet, correct? That's correct. And then you talked about the distance from Cooper to the vehicle. What was that distance again? Uh, I measured it at just over three and a half feet. And um, the, the pavement you described, this is this a pretty hot area when you're crawling around? Right, pretty hot. And why, why is it specifically as you literally have to crawl around on a scene like this? Right, that's correct. Can you describe why you do that? Uh, I was a uh, chalking the tires with paint and I uh, was taking some cursory measurements from a, uh, um, the wall that was near a uh, Uncle Matty House pizza behind on the other side of this area. Even from this distance depicted on state certificate number 20, what is that item right there? Uh, it's a uh, plastic bag. Is that the Home Depot bag you described? I believe that's correct. I want to go to state certificate number 22. And, you know, the jury will have the actual photographs themselves, but look at 22. Even looking through through this window here, what's that red item? Uh, that's the, uh, the car seat. This is State's Exhibit number 23. Um, even with a little <coughs> bit of a glare, what's this red item right here that's depicted? It's the top portion of the car seat. Where specifically was that car seat inside the vehicle? In other words, was it on a particular side or was it in the center of that back seat? It was a, uh, in the center and it was facing towards the rear. If you lie on your back as a child, you'd be looking out the rear window. State's Exhibit number 24, similarly looking through this windshield, What's that red item right here? It's the car seat. We're now looking at State's Exhibit number 25. What's that? It's the uh, the bag, the plastic bag that's in the front passenger seat. This is the car door that was open when you arrived on scene, when initial police officer arrived on scene? That's correct. What's that? That's the uh, Home Depot bag and the car seat. What's that? What, what number are we on this one? States 28. It looked like a uh, briefcase or a laptop bag. From what vantage point are you standing when you took this photograph? I'm standing just out the driver's side door, photographing inside from the outside. I'm not inside the car, I'm actually outside photographing inside. Are you standing in the door frame? Yes. What's that? 
That is the a, uh, a car seat. What's that? That is the Home Depot bag. This is State's Exhibit 29 now. <coughs> you see all three of those items that we've just talked about. The uh, briefcase, Home Depot bag, and car seat. From your vantage point, standing just outside the vehicle, but in the door frame of it. Yes, you can. This is State's Exhibit 31. Looking out the uh, passenger side, or looking into the passenger side uh, uh, window, what's this item right here? It's the car seat. Now, did you actually open the passenger side door at any point? No, I did not. This is State's Exhibit 32. Describe what 32 is and how you took this photograph. I photographed this uh, actually by placing the lens on my camera on the outside window to get this shot. So while it might look like you're in, actually inside the vehicle, you, you just to get rid of the glare have put the camera directly up against it. That's correct. This is State's Exhibit 33. Looking at State's Exhibit 33, where are you standing? What vantage point when you took this photograph? Just outside the door of the driver's side. Still within the door frame? Still within the door frame as it open, but in between the actual car and the actual door that's open. So the door is your face and it will be on your left side? That's behind me, correct. What's that? That will be the car seat. What's that? The Home Depot bag. State's Exhibit 34. Similarly, what's that? Home Depot bag, car seat. This is State's Exhibit 35. Still within the door <coughs> frame, is that correct? That's correct. State's Exhibit 37. Talk about this vantage point and what is depicted here. I just zoomed in from the uh, same position I was and zoomed in through the a uh, in between the seats to show to depict the uh, car seat as it's sitting. The car seat close to the front driver's side and front passenger side of the uh, seat. It appeared to almost be touching both the backs of both seats. State's Exhibit 38. Zoomed in from that vantage point, is that correct? That's correct. You said it was almost touching, looking at State's Exhibit 39. Just a slight gap in between the passenger seat and that. Section leading. How much space would you estimate was between that? Maybe a, an inch or two. State's Exhibit 40, describe that, please. Uh, just a same vantage point, just a different a, uh, zoom on. The uh, position of car seat. State's Exhibit 41. Describe what 41 shows, please. Um, once again, <coughs> place the uh, lens of the camera on the window to zoom in to see an uh, overall of the car seat back there. What's that? What seat? It will be the driver's seat. The passenger seat would be right there. Where would Cooper's head have been if you were placed in that car seat? The objection, no foundation. Well, if a child were in this seat, where would his head be? Down up here? Up here? If a child was normally sitting in that seat, the bottom would be here, his legs would be here, his head would be here. State's Exhibit 29. Um, is, is this the dashboard area of that vehicle? Yes. And it's difficult to see here. Uh, but we have a zoomed in photograph of this, correct? Correct. Is there a temperature reading on the dashboard for the exterior of the vehicle? Yes. Lumpkin, that was stakes 29. Pardon. Now let's talk about Cooper Harris. When investigator Jackson 
got to this location, did he lift that sheet, allowing you to observe Cooper and take some pictures of him? Yes, he did. What's this area of the vehicle where Cooper's body was near? <coughs> Driver's side position of the vehicle. This is State's Exhibit 47. After that sheet was removed, what does 47 depict? 47 is an overall viewing of the deceased Cooper Harris. You would talk about his body being in a specific position. Looking at 47, can you describe for our record and for the jury what you saw? To me, it appeared that he was lying on the on the ground, probably the same position he was in a car seat. His knees were slightly bent out to the side, his arms by his side. This is State's Exhibit 48. You talked about some uh, injuries that you observed to the head and face. Can you can you see those here? I know we have a better vantage point in a moment. But just just to his a uh, will be on his left cheek area. There'd be some on this side and some on the uh, top of his a uh, right scalp. This is a photograph, State's Exhibit number 50. Um, we talked a little bit about a diaper. Can you actually see the top of that diaper line on the front of, of Cooper? Yes, that's correct. And then the, the marks or injuries that he observed to his face, can you see those here on the left cheek? That's correct. Can you talk a little bit about li lividity, the discoloration? Do you see some of that lividity depicted here on his left arm? That's correct. And when we talk about rigor, we're really talking about, is it stiffness? Right. When you observed uh, Investigator Jackson with Cooper Harris, did he exhibit that stiffness, that rigor that you talked about? That's correct. <coughs> Looking at State's Exhibit 52, now on the right side of Cooper Harris, did you see that evidence of lividity, the, the pulling of the blood that you mentioned on, on the right arm? That's correct. Where? The right by his elbow. Right elbow. Look at State's Exhibit 53. Is that that lividity on the left elbow? This would be on the left elbow. This is State's Exhibit 54. That darkest colored area? Right, correct, on the left elbow. Well, now to talk a little bit about the, the right elbow looking at the right elbow, and to be clear, the, the, the blue gloved hands here, is that Investigator Jackson? Yes. As he's um, moving Cooper at the crime scene prior to removing him from the crime scene, is he allowing you to take photographs, and have you done this with him before? Yes, I have. Looking at the right elbow, describe what's depicted here, please. He's maneuvering the, uh, the body to show a lividity or any signs of a uh, injury. State's good 59, ha having lifted that arm somewhat, what's this discolored area here that you're taking a photograph of? It's showing the lividity on the, the uh, back side of his right arm. When you talked about um, rigor and that, uh, being in a fixed position, were his legs basically stiff like this? You know, I didn't touch the decedent, but just you know, visualizing what he looked like, it would look like the rigor was set in as he sat. All right, I wanna stop on State's Exhibit 66 for a moment here. Looking at State's Exhibit 66, after investigator uh, Jackson turned Cooper over, you talked about some a wet area, discoloration. Looking at State's Exhibit 66, can you describe what you saw? Yeah, when he, uh, Investigator Jackson rolled a uh, Cooper over. Uh, the back of his back was wet, and you can actually see the wetness in the top of his blue shorts. Similarly, the back of his um, shirt, did you observe that area as well? That's correct. After Investigator Jackson pushed the shirt up, were you able to see lividity there as well? That's correct. And looking at State's Exhibit 71, the discoloration on the shorts you described, can you actually see that there as well, the, wet, the wet area? That's correct. 
States Exhibit 72 was this area that also appeared to, to be wet, the, the backside of, of Cooper. Yes, it was. States Exhibit 73. Did you zoom up <coughs> in that wet area, both the top of the shorts and, and the back? That's correct. States Exhibit 75, uh, looking at the head of Cooper, specifically the rear of the head, did you see any lividity there as well as Investigator Jackson was manipulating Cooper's body? Yes. And then States Exhibit 77, in terms of the lividity, uh, looking at 77, after Cooper's uh, hands were pulled down slightly, could you actually see some of the lividity on the backside, as well as the, the white area where there was obviously contact? Right. States Exhibit 82, <coughs> did you observe any abrasions in the neck area? I believe there were some small abrasions hey, uh, where the skin was at, just behind the ear. States Exhibit 84, was this Investigator Jackson who's manipulating that area so you can photograph it? Yes. And then, obviously Investigator Jackson, he's down on his knees, is that correct? That's correct. Was he, he closer to Cooper than you were? Yeah, he was, I was kind of hovering over him, he was kind of under me. Um, at a point where I'm about to play the video, unless you want to take a break. Oh, I think it's a good idea to take a break. Yes, How long did the video last? I'm sorry. It's not terribly long, maybe a total 10 minutes between the two of them, 10 to 15 minutes. Let's take a break. Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, close up pass, keep an open mind. We do not talk to each other. And put us when you're out, you know, do this film. Do not talk to each other about the test. Y'all have a good break. Until 10:25. Watch your step going down.
And is this a fair and accurate aerial depiction that includes one, two, one, two, Winds Ridge Circle? That's correct. What else is depicted on 232 that we've already discussed? Uh, the location of the uh, Home Depot Treehouse Corporate Office, uh, the Little Apron Academy, and the, the Chick-fil-A. All right. I'm now going to tender. It's 229, 230, 231, and 232. Objection. Submitted, Scott. Objection. You need to stay with me for a second. get our bearings. We're going to start what was previously admitted. <clears throat> 228. This is the Uncle Matios in the, the first scene, the primary scene that you went to, correct? That's correct. And then it, this is labeled Cumberland Parkway, is that correct? That's correct. And what road is this? Cumberland Boulevard. And um, I want to ask you, comparing Cumberland Boulevard to this area that you went to, the primary scene, uh, which is more congested? I would say Acres Mill, coming in from the interstate. Over here? Correct. Are these business office here off of Cumberland Boulevard? Right, there are several businesses next to, this is Cumberland Mall, and just to the east of there, there will be a lots of other businesses that are congregated in the area. These are retail establishments up to the top? Correct. And, and restaurants? Correct. And then these, these, are, these are offices, correct? Correct. And what's this? That is the movie theater. This is space exhibit 229. <coughs> Start with what should already be familiar to the jury. At the top of 229, what's this area? This is the uh, area where uh, yeah, the scene, the primary scene was located where people were discovered. And comparing it, you can see that stakes 228 is actually, that, that vantage point's included in here, but we've now zoomed out for, for 229. Is that accurate? That's accurate. All right. Coming down Acres Mill, Cumberland Boulevard, then down this road, what's depicted here as we go south on our map? That's the Home Depot Treehouse Office. Continuing on down that road, Cumberland Parkway. Describe what's depicted here. Uh, it's a Chick-fil-A restaurant, and the Publix would be situated across the parking lot, kind of down a hill. There's a Goodyear tire shop here, and a Starbucks right here. Is this the Home Depot, the store that you refer to? Right, this is the Home Depot store right here. What is right here? The Little Apron Academy. Is the daycare associated with Home Depot? I'm under the assumption. All right. The, um, before we leave this, sorry. When you were tasked with going to process uh, Leanna Harris's vehicle, did you actually find that at the Home Depot treehouse office? Yes. And is this where you went to take some photographs and document that, that vehicle in its condition? That's correct. States Exhibit 230 now. We're looking at States Exhibit 230. What's marked here <coughs> up towards the top is actually tilted sideways, but what, what, what's marked there? Uh, Little Apron Academy. That's the name. What is this that's marked here, more towards the center of Stakes Exhibit 230? It's a Chick-fil-A restaurant. What is this right here? The Home Depot retail store. What is this marked here? And this is the, the Publix, a, a freestanding shopping center. And on the left-hand side? And the Little Apron Academy. <clears throat> States Exhibit 
228. What's marked at the top of 228? The initial scene location of the Uncle Matty L's Pizza. And what's over here? A, uh, the movie theater. And then the secondary scene that you'd refer to, Home Depot Treehouse, is that marked here as well? That's correct, right here. Describe 231, please. It's the overview zoomed in of the treehouse office and the adjacent parking locations. This is the employee parking for that treehouse That's office. That's correct. I won't hold you to the specific spot, but is that where you found Leanne Harris's vehicle? It is. now once you have a seat for just a second <coughs> show you some photographs 97 through These are photographs that you took of her vehicle? They are. And are these photographs 97 through 111 fair and accurate depictions of the vehicle that you photographed at the treehouse? They are. Tender states 97 through 111. No objection. We have these included on um, the thumb drive that's previously been admitted uh, 227 and you testified that there were fair and accurate depictions of the vehicle included on there. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> Ms. Duncan, I'll bring this to you in just a second. Can I just ask, just quickly for the record, it's the same photos that are on the thumb drive as what you just looked at here? They are. Okay, very good. If you don't mind, Kimber, you can sit down. States Exhibit 97. Describe what 97 is, please. This is a, uh, I located the, uh, this vehicle, which I, uh, I learned belonged to Mrs. Harris, in the uh, location of the Treehouse, Home Depot Treehouse corporate office. This is the parking lot area seen around and behind it. Is that correct? That's correct. photo of the back of the vehicles that you can identify at a later date. That's correct for the license plate number. <coughs> and you did that in this case, States Exhibit 100. That's correct. Were you able to look inside the vehicle to see whether there was a car seat? Uh, from the outside, the door was unlocked and we did not have a key, so all the photographs they, uh, that you see inside the vehicle are actually from the outside of the vehicle. We'll go to State 107. We don't need to show all these to the jury. They'll have them at a later time. But looking at 107, what's depicted here? Uh, car seat. And what direction does that car seat face? It's forward facing. <clears throat> States Exhibit 108, what's that? Same thing, car seat in the, in the back seat of the car. And then from the other side, we'll go to States 110, for example. What's 110 show? Uh, just for another vantage point from the driver's side of the car seat to the rear uh, back window. All right. 
this vehicle <coughs> was processed or you photographed it from the Home Depot treehouse office depicted in State Exhibit 231. I don't need to put that back up, but that, is, is that correct? 231? Right, that, that's correct. It was in this location right about here. <coughs> okay. Uh, after taking photographs of that location, did you proceed to Wings Ridge, the defendant's home, per instructions from your command staff so that you could process that pursuant to search warrant? That's, that's correct. And um, as with the other scenes that we've just talked about, did you take photographs there? I did. And were there some items of evidence that were actually collected pursuant to search warrant by you as the crime scene investigator? They were collected by me and instructed through the detectives. Why don't you have a seat and let's do the photographs first. of the front door area of that apartment? That's correct. Let me break these up again by category. 113. Sorry to turn my back on the jury, but until they're tendered, I'll make sure y'all don't see them. 113 through 118. Are those fair and accurate depictions of the front hall area of that apartment? They are. One, I said one, should be 119. 120 through 133, are those fair and accurate depictions of the living room area? Yes, they are. Next room, dining, 134. <coughs> through 146. Fair and accurate depictions of the dining and kitchen area. Yes, they are. <coughs> 147 through 150. Fair and accurate depictions of the hallway area leading back towards the bedroom. Yes, they are. 151. 156. Those fair and accurate depictions. Of the hall bath. Yes, they are. 157. at 177 through and including 200. Are those fair and accurate depictions of the master bedroom and a closet? <coughs> that's, that's correct. States 201. Are a fair and accurate depiction of the bathroom associated with that master? That's correct. States 202. Fair and accurate depiction of the laundry room? Correct. That's correct. And then states 203. Is that a zoomed in photograph of the bookcase that I believe was in the li living room area? That's correct. Search states 112 through 203. No objection. Admitted. All right, why don't you step down for me? We don't need to go through all of these photographs of Shumper. Uh, but I am going to go through some of them. The jury will have these to look at now that they've been admitted. So let's just start with states 112. Looking at 112, why do you typically take a photograph like this when you go to a sign or a scene pursuant to search warrant and, to, and um, process it? Right, the address, <coughs> the address numbers are on the door so that we're in the right location. I want to ask you about uh, items associated with, with children as we go through some of these photographs. Did you see some of those items within this, this home on Windsor Ridge? Throughout the house. This is State's Exhibit 113. On the left side, what door is that? 
That will be the front door. And what item is this just inside the hallway? That appears to be a jogging stroller. This is still the living room area in stage 114, correct? To the left? Correct. And is there a kitchen to the right? Correct. Let's take a look at the living room area if we could. Starting with 121. Is that that same jogging stroller on the left-hand side of this photograph? That's correct. And then what's the distance <coughs> here just as you make a left into that living room area? Just as you make a left into the living room area, it'll be the fireplace, and you'll see a TV set on the wall. Then beside it, a continued on, will be the bookcase built into the wall. And what does this say right here? It says, Cooper's first year. Let's take a look at some of the other items in the living room. This is stakes exhibit 125. Describe what 125 depicts, please. This is the living room, just an overall of it, a, uh, showing some various, say, uh, Children's toys. Identify what children's toys you're able to observe inside that living room area. Uh, starting here, you'll see a chair, a, uh, some play toys, push toys, a red ball, and a uh, push cart. There's a bookshelf that's in there, and we'll talk more about that in a second, but I want to show exactly where that is. This is States Exhibit 123. Looking at 123, is that in that living room area that you just described? That's correct. And um, is this the bookshelf that's depicted in that last photograph that I showed you before asking you to step down. That's correct. Let's go to this is just in the <coughs> living room. This is States Exhibit 129. What's depicted here in the center? Uh, some more of the children's toys. Turning the corner towards, is this the back hallway, is that correct? That's correct. <clears throat> I want to ask you about the kitchen area. Looking at States Exhibit 134, um, describe what 134 depicts. This is the dining room area, and it's just across from the living room area, and there's a hall that separates it. And behind this, on this side, would be the kitchen. Looking at States 136, is this still in the kitchen area? That's correct. Did, did you see any children's items that were here? Can you describe what, what's depicted? There's a high chair. Now, um, to, to, to the right of this area, is that where the actual kitchen is? That's correct. And then looking up at States 137, is this like a little, little pass through? It is. To the kitchen area? That's correct. Did you see things <coughs> associated with a child inside the kitchen as well? Right, there were some sippy cups on or about the, a, uh, um, the area of where the sink would be at. Let's go to 143. We're now inside the kitchen area. Correct. States 145, the child sippy cups that you just referred to, do you see those depicted here? Yes, there would be a few of them in this photograph right here. Is this the wall just outside the kitchen area? That's in correct. States 140. That's correct. What do you see here? Uh, there's a uh, a car's children's book bag right here. States Exhibit 159. Describe what 159 depicts. This is looking into the. Uh, child's bedroom from the hall. This is Cooper Harris's bedroom? That's correct. Obviously there are children's items in that room as well. That's correct. Including some toys, Stakes Exhibit 161? That's correct. And a bed in the corner? That's correct. There was also a bed we, we just saw with a, what looked like it had a dark brown um, headboard up against the opposite wall of the cross. That's correct. States Exhibit 171, there are children's items on top of that bed as well. That's correct. States 
space exhibit 177. Is this the master bedroom? That's correct. <coughs> and um, what's this down on the floor here? A laptop computer. Space exhibit 179. Is that a close up view of that laptop computer? Yes, it is. States 185, describe what that depicts. Just a close up I, uh, of that same exact laptop I bet. One eighty six. Um, was there also a, a computer that you observed just beside the TV in the States One Eighty Six? That's correct. There's a a, a a computer tower just situated in between the the, the highway and that a uh, dresser right there. Other than the the master room and I think one of the bathrooms, were there essentially um, children's items in almost every room of the house? Yes. This is State's Exhibit 203. What's depicted here in 203? Uh, that's the bookshelf that's in the uh, living room. This is State's 203. You're holding 203 in your hand, correct? Correct. And um, I let you hold that because we have some books that are labeled here on, on the bookshelf. Is that correct? That's correct. So when you zoom in, you can actually see some of those a little bit better, correct? Correct. All right. For instance, what's the title of this book that I'm pointing at here, essentially in the center of 203 as I zoom into it? His Needs, Her Needs. Mm -hmm. What about this one right here? It's kind of got the brown spine. A sacred Marriage. What about this one right here, the pink spine that's just beside it? Calm my anxious heart. Um, what's the name on that one? This is Breaking Free. Okay. And these are all found on the bookshelf just inside of the uh, living room, correct? That's correct. There were uh, at least a couple of items that you collected from the home. Um, did you collect, collect that Dell uh, computer tower? That's correct. And did you collect a MacBook Pro laptop from that location as well? That's correct.
233 and just looking at the package and now for opening and look inside. Can you tell me if you recognize what that is? This is a MacBook laptop collected from the sink. And did you collect that from the Winds Ridge home? That's correct. And when you collect it, what do you do so that you can recognize the item when you get to court? How do you package it? Uh, they're placed in a evidence bags if they can and then they're sealed in initial. Okay, very good. And did you do that in this yes. case when this was uh, collected? Right, this was actually a uh, collected and sealed by a uh, one of the detectives that was executing the search warrant with me. You were present in that. We actually saw a photograph of this particular laptop, correct? That's correct. All right. And the tower, because of its size, it's not bad. This is State's Exhibit 234. Do you recognize this as being the computer tower that was in the master bedroom? That's correct. And the jury already saw some photographs of, of, of this. This is the same tower that was beside uh, the TV stand? That's correct. And this was collected pursuant to search warrant as well? That's correct. Vendor states 233 and 234. Senator Jones, motions regarding these matters, we don't have any objection on that. Very good, thank you. Now, is it your job to actually do any computer analysis on these types of things, or we have a separate unit that does extractions and analysis? No, it's our, we have a high-tech crime squad that a, uh, examines and extracts all data from electronic devices that we collect. Okay. The search warrant that we just talked about and the photographs that were depicted for uh, the jury, the one that's currently up on the screen happens to be 203. That initial search warrant, when was that executed on defendant's home? On the same day as the original notification of the incident. Later on, about 8 o'clock is when I believe we started that. Okay, so that would be June the 18th of 2014. That's correct. Were you uh, later tasked, I know you're not the lead investigator, the lead detective, but were you later tasked with going back to that residence um, sometime later that month, June 30th of 2014? That's correct. And um, specifically, I want to ask you about some, some light bulbs. Were you asked to go and see if there were any light bulbs that were out inside the, the home, a particular type of light bulb? That's correct. And did you take some photographs when you went back in pursuant to search warrant on June the 30th of 2014? I did. Did you find some light bulbs that were out? Yeah, in the bathroom we did find some light bulbs that were out. <coughs> so, two photographs, this is 235 and 236. Those fair and accurate depictions of the um, area inside the bathroom, bathroom that you took the photographs showing the couple of light bulbs that were out? That's correct. Uh, from June the 30th of 2014? That's correct. Tender states 235 and I want to be uh, really clear to, I mean, we, we've obviously put a lot of photographs in. We haven't looked at all of them. There, there, there are a lot more that are included on this, this flash drive and a lot more hard copies that have all been admitted. Is that correct? That's correct. In, in addition, you, you took a lot more photographs than just these. Is, is that your responsibility as a crime scene investigator? These photographs tell the story, and I take a lot of them for this case. Okay. Twenty-seven to remain in. I'm sorry. The flash drive. 
Do you want me to leave it in or take it out? Um, you can leave it in for now. Get the get a while there. Kind of use it. Yeah. All right, that's all I have at this point. Cross the Senate, please. Um, let me talk just a little bit back um, about your training to be a crime scene. Is it crime scene technician? Is that the official title? That's correct. Right. And uh, is there a specific training that you have to go through in order to become a crime scene technician? That's correct. Right. And that's separate, I think, even indicated from what a police officer goes through. That's right? correct. Okay. And um, how... How long does it take to get I don't know, certified or just labeled that? How long does it take to get that? It's a uh, state certification. Okay. And a, uh, I would say if you had nothing going on, you can get it done within probably about a year and a half. Wow. Okay. And uh, is that like going to school constantly for a year and a half? Or is it no, it's whatever they're scheduled at the uh, Georgia Public Safety Training Center in Forsyth, Georgia. Okay. And uh, is there a certain number of hours or weeks that you have to go in order to get that? Training? There are. I'm sorry? There are. And what are those? How many did you have to have? They're separate courses. Okay. Their lengths and times vary. Okay. Um, they're all mandated courses that you have to go to to accomplish that part of the post training. Yeah. How much did you go through? Every one of them. How much was that? Uh, general hours off the top of my head, probably 320, maybe 360. Okay. And that's all before you become a crime scene technician? Right, before you're post certified. I got you. And uh, do you go through continuous training each year, I presume, to either keep that certification or just to stay up to date with things? Right, just to stay up with things. Once you achieve that certification, there's no mandate of going to a certain number of hours every year, but we do. And do you have any idea in, in the time from your becoming a technician till you became, till June 18th, any idea how many extra hours you may have had? I'd probably say maybe, you know, 100 to 200 more hours of training. And um, in, in going through that training, of course, they're talking to you about how to how to handle handle it. Excuse me, handle a scene, handle evidence, how to document it, how to make reports, how to <coughs> deal with all the people involved, and a lot of other things. I presume. That's correct. Right. And um, in your documenting a scene, are you keeping track and writing notes as you go throughout the scene that you can track to later, or how do you, how do you actually draw your report? It would be, it, it, times and dates are, are usually a, uh, I'll write those down, or as I collect evidence, there's a rope written on there. Okay. Uh, times and dates are, are, are kept by a, uh, a uh, this random notes that I would take on when I do them. Um, the, uh, other than that, that's basically how I keep track with them, is just writing them on a notepad. You say times and dates. Uh, how about what people would tell you as you come to a scene or things that you see while you're on the scene? Are you writing that down as you go or you just kind of keep it in your head or a little bit of both? What? Well, uh, if you gave me a command, I would write down, go to this address. I would write the address down, sure. the date that the date and time that I arrived, the date and time that I left. Anything else that I collected, I would write it down. Okay, very good. And, uh, and you did a report in this case, correct? Correct. A multiple report, I guess I should say. Right. Uh, Your I'm trying to take them in order as you talked about them. As you were called out, uh, I understand Lieutenant Farrell actually called you directly to tell you to report to Takers Mill location. That's correct. And um, your understanding as you came there was there was a deceased child that you needed to document that scene. And that, that's correct. See that. And um, is. I think you indicated on direct that Lieutenant Farrell's one who said that the child is basically over there under the sheet. Um, I don't know if he did give you a description of what the child looked like or anything at that point in time, or just the child there, or do you recall? Right, there's no description. Just, I, 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 you know, when I get there to do the walkthrough, I was like, and I didn't see the child. I didn't know if the child had been transported by an ambulance. Okay. Hey, uh, and I asked where the child was, and it said under a sheet on the ground by the car. 
would that have been the extent of what lieutenant's kind of telling you to do is say that there's a child here and we just need to document everything like you normally would? That's correct, going through the motions. All right. And um, when you're walking around the scene, are you walking with a lieutenant or a detective or anybody? You're just kind of going on your own or how, how do you do that? I go about it on my own. If I have any questions, I'll ask. They're usually there to, to manage the scene, command the scene. <coughs> if they have anything to, to give to me, they will come and say, hey, do this. Okay. Or if I have any questions from them, I'll ask them. They usually kind of stay outside as I, as I process. It. Okay. And uh, obviously you're getting inside the crime tape, crime scene tape there, you know, just kind of walking around. Do they have things marked off at any point in time? I guess in this scene it's a little bit different than some you deal with. Uh, was there, other than obviously the car where the child was, was there anything else kind of marked off for you to be looking at? No, it was generally as simple as there's a car here, there's a child deceased under the blanket by the, by the car. Very good. As you um, are taking photographs all around uh, the scene and uh, the vehicle here, I understood you say you never did actually enter the vehicle itself. That's correct. Right. And as you're um, taking photographs, do you have one particular camera that you use to do that, or do you have to change up <coughs> different cameras depending on what it is you want to photograph? I have one that I use. All right. And uh, we may even see a picture of it in a reflection of a window of one That's of these. Can you just kind of describe to us what kind of camera it is that you use? It's a digital SLR with a, uh, a lens, basically, that we can zoom and magnify a, uh, what we're taking photographs. When SLR say, I mean light reflective, not just a point and shoot camera. And how, just how big is it as far as its diameter is a little bit? Uh, it's, just describing my hands, it's about this big. Is that six, eight inches? I would say about six inches. Okay, wide, holding wide. It. And how about the, the depth of the lens? Are we talking like a, something we'd see on TV, someone? No, I Eagle believe, I, refresh my, from my report, I just think I believe I was using a, uh, 18 by 55 millimeter lens. The Canon <coughs> two T21 SLR, does that sound right? right. Okay, very good. And uh, so what does that mean, 18 by 55? What does that tell you as far as how big it was? This, the, the field of aperture I am taking the photograph. What I can zoom in and zoom out on, basically, lane and starts. Right. And uh, I'm trying to just get an idea how, how long it is. The lens on the yeah. camera? Yes, sir. Uh, just maybe a, an inch or two in length. And uh, so as you walk around uh, looking at the vehicle, you're, you're looking for particular things that you can take photographs of. Is that fair to say? Uh, generally just taking overall and close up and a, uh, documenting everything that can be documented. Okay. And is it part of your job as you arrive on a scene to kind of understanding what the scene appears to be about, to be looking to see if there's particular things you might see that be relevant to that particular investigation? There's always that point. I, uh, you know, my, my main objective is to document it as they sat, so we can bring it back here so you guys can see them. And that's what my, pri my primary objective is. If I'm asked to go take a photograph of something specific, then I'll be given that command. Most of it's just general observation and general overview of the scope of the incident location. And is it fair to say that sometimes you take photographs that you just think you're documenting that sometimes later on become real important because you capture something even unintentionally. That sometimes happens. <coughs> and sometimes vice versa, you wish, gosh, I was right there, I could have got a picture of that, but I didn't get it. That might have been helpful to have. Sometimes that happens as well. Very good. And uh, <coughs> as you're walking around the scene, we got all sorts of photographs uh, of this vehicle. Um, is there any picture that you took that has the roof of the car in it? We could go back and look at the photographs. I believe there's on the direct top of the roof, looking right. down on there. Right. I didn't have a ladder, and I'm six foot tall, so I wouldn't be able to take that photograph. I got you. How tall are you? Six foot. Oh, you are six foot. I got you. And um, so you weren't able to see over the roof, in other words. Like directly on top of it? Right. I could see the roof line. Right. And then the curvature of the roof line, but I couldn't get a directly overhand shot of that unless I were standing on top of something. Very good. <clears throat> you noted 
that as you were walking around the car, there were several, uh, well, there was one door that was open, and uh, there were some tinted windows on the back windows, and then the front windows were clear, correct? That's correct. And um, as far as the car seat, you mentioned several times, or at least Mr. Evans asked you about seeing the car seat. As you were taking the photos, had you been directed specifically to take photos of the car seat or anything particularly regarding the car seat? Hey, uh, at the beginning, the no, then as we're out there, I'm getting commands to go make sure that you take photographs of the car seat. Okay. So that was a specific task that was given to you for you to go do? That's correct. Right. And when you have that specific task, you that's part of your training is you go directly looking for it, make sure you can document it, get it clear, everything you can come up with. Correct? That's correct. know you um, as you went around the vehicle there were some pictures and I'm going to get that to the yeah. let me see if I can figure this out no nope, I'm going to do it all fast you took some pictures of the car and uh I'll find I'll ask you as I'm looking for it. You recall around the car itself, uh, there being some water on the ground. Does that stand out in your mind at all? I, and when I say the car, the Acres Mill scene with Mr. Harris's vehicle. Okay. Do you recall that at all? Um, I believe the car was running. Okay. Prior to my getting there, I, uh, I don't recall water from the car. I mean, Water from the air conditioning from the car? Or that, that's what it looks like. That's what I want to ask you about. I was just trying to see if that's something that you noted. I don't think I find a picture here for you. But. On that note, I, I don't recall uh, water on the ground being on the ground. That wasn't something certainly that you were looking for or told to be looking for or noting, correct? That's correct. I'll find it, then I'll show it to you. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, when you were uh, on the scene and you were with the medical examiner uh, investigator, he got there after you did, and you had already done an initial walk around. Is that correct? That's correct. And um, you didn't interview anybody on scene, correct? I, I didn't. There, <coughs> I do not conduct any interviews of anyone on the scene. It's just primarily questions between detectives on scene command and myself. And that's only the people I speak with on all scene. Very good, very good, all right. And um, as you prepared your report for this, you, I mean, you tried to document everything that you observed and saw and were aware of relevant to this. That's correct. That's correct. And um, as far as the items that are in the car, um, you didn't go in the car. Was there ever a point in time where you were allowed to actually go inside the car to document things inside the vehicle? I did not go. That was the vehicle was towed from scene back to our a uh, crime scene, a uh, processing garage at police headquarters, uh -huh. which a search warrant was later obtained so entry could be made and then processed on the inside. That wasn't done by me. That was done by my partner early that morning, the next morning. Okay. Who is that by chance? Grim partner. Yeah. I'm sorry. Grimstead. Officer Grimstead. That's okay. correct. He, he wasn't with you on this thing, correct? No, he, we worked morning watch. He come in after I got right back. Very good. Um, I want to show a picture of Mr. Evans. Is there a particular folder I can punch to, so the jury can see it well? <coughs> I can assist you with that. If you don't mind assisting me, I appreciate it. What's the photo number for? Uh, 19. Um, have you ever seen that? That photograph? Yes, sir. 
this is what I'm talking about in the foreground and in front of the car. It looks like some water coming from the car. You see that? Air conditioning condensation. Okay. You're familiar with that. Right. Okay. And with, what does that indicate to you? That air conditioning is running in the car? Or that it has been running to cause That's the car? That's correct. All right. And um, do you, you said, was the car running when you were there or just the key in the ignition? I believe it was running and then it was turned off by somebody. Right. Okay. A, uh, but the key was left in the ignition. All right. Very good. And um, did you note in the the photo where you were asked about the temperature? Two twenty two. Did you note? Did you know? Secret way to go back and then they're showing you. You X out of it, yes, sir. Okay. All right. You find the exhibit number and double tap it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's in a that one. Yeah, there it is. There we go. Um, this is stage 222, I believe. And uh, right next to the temperature that you were asked to highlight. Are you able to see a, an indicator as far as the air direction on the air conditioner on there? Are you able to see that where you are? I, I can, I can, I can see that. give you the picture up close. Are you familiar enough to tell us as far as the air indicator, what's that indicating where the air is blowing? <coughs> it's got a, it looks like maybe an arrow pointing up, a, the temperature of 95 degrees and low LO to the right of that. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> and you went to talking about the car sheet that you saw inside the vehicle. That from every angle as you took a photograph, you were able to see the car sheet. And as we look at the photograph, certainly we're able to see that. Ball again. Do you recall as you were on the scene uh, looking into those, looking into the car and seeing the car seat at that point in time, or you are indicating to us that you saw them as you see them in the photographs? Let's repeat the question. Yeah. It, when you were on the scene, do you remember at that point, you were just taking photographs of the car itself? Right. Do you remember mentally saying, wow, I can see that car sheet from every angle here? Or is that just something as you look back at photographs, you can see, I can see it in the photographs? I was just trying to document it from every angle. Okay. So I you mean, weren't making note of what you could see inside the car at the time. You were just taking pictures of whatever was left. Right. If every vantage point I could possibly present to someone. Very good. And um, <coughs> as you do your job, again, your your. You have some specific training to be focused on particular things you're looking at to try to capture it all. Right? That's correct. And, and so when you're looking for things, you, if they're there, you're able to find them for the most part, correct? I'll try my best. Very good. And um, do you do that kind of throughout your life? Do you catch yourself just kind of looking at every single thing as you go around, or are you able to kind of leave that at work? Try to leave that at work. Very good, very good. And uh, so as you came to court, for example, this morning, you, you came in here, were you focused on trying to figure out where the, where the witness box is, because it's a different courtroom than you're used to? I uh, was hoping somebody would show me the way, but yes. <laughs> Very good. And uh, making sure you didn't trip on cords and that sort of thing, that's kind of, that's what your focus was on, correct? Right. That's correct. Right. You weren't necessarily focused around to see what else was in the courtroom, correct? That's correct. Right. And uh, let's say, particularly for this podium, this didn't catch your eye or anything of that nature as you walked in here a couple times this morning, correct? That's correct. So whether or not this podium is open or closed, you didn't make note of that. I didn't. And anything that's in the podium, you didn't make note of that. No, I didn't. All right. And uh, could you step down here for me, please, sir? <clears throat> Just looking at the podium we have in the courtroom, it actually is open on this side that we're looking at, correct? Correct. Are you able to see an item sitting right there inside the podium? Keyboard. All right. You're able to see that very clearly looking at it right now, that's correct? correct. Now direct your attention to it, correct? correct? You didn't notice that as you walked in here to the courtroom, correct? Didn't cross my mind. You weren't past the look at it. That's correct. You? Very good. You have a seat. Now, 
Now, frankly, it wasn't of any interest to you to look at the podium as you walked in. You're simply trying to get to the witness stand. Simply trying to get right where I am. Now, you said, it was a little unclear to me, when you got there, did you say that Mr. Harris was in the patrol car and that you saw him, or you couldn't remember if you saw him or not? I believe they were on their way out, okay. outside of going in the Acres Mill Road on the way in, Piper patrol car. And you say actually moving, the patrol car is leaving at that point in time? I believe they were stationary when I arrived, when I parked, I parked outside of Acres Mill on, near Cinco's on that side. We can't, you may can see from a photograph. Let's start with that first one, is it S1, the first one from the Acres Mill, or is that? Yeah. Did you park somewhere out here, outside the same take? Can we go one more photograph sure. more? Or, no. I, that's where I was generally stuck okay, parked. This will go to the next. One. It will. In other words, you didn't drive through this, obviously. No, sir. And you didn't come around to the back side. No, sir. Okay. Hey, right. if you look at that photograph. Yes, sir. And you sit down. If you want to, to, to the know. left. To the left, I'm parked literally on Acres Mill Road. Very good. Very good. And uh, was traffic getting backed up because of all the police cars there, or were y'all out of the way so that it wasn't getting any worse? Yeah, all the all the uh, patrol cars are inside the front entrance of that. I mean, Acres Mill was running pretty clear. Okay. And um, when you say it running pretty clear, there's just a regular, as we know in Cobb County, our five o'clock traffic, but Re five regular heavy flow of traffic. That's correct. Right. And uh, when you got there, by chance, which direction did you come from? Were you driving from this way toward Alcamadios, or were you coming from? In other words, which way you had to turn to turn in? Coming from the interstate side. All right. So when you came in to turn to the right, were you in the far left lane to get there, or did you kind of get over to the right lane so you could pull in there? I would be making a left-hand turn to turn in there. You would make a left-hand turn, so you were coming right. from this side. Right, the interstate side. Very good. All right. And um, so you believe that Officer Piper's car was some was it somewhere out here getting ready to leave, you think? I believe when I, when I arrived, mm -hmm. they were moving out to that lane and go around to the outside to make a right okay. or left. I didn't really pay attention to their a, a direction of travel. I just remember <coughs> seeing this quad car coming out and okay. recognizing Piper. Oh, okay. I, that, I, that's why it stands out, because you, you recognize her specifically. Correct. Okay. You didn't recognize anybody being in the back seat at that point in time? I, I saw a male back there. Okay. but. Didn't know who it was at that point. Right. Very good. <coughs> Excuse me. When you um, had to take the photographs of Cooper underneath the uh, the sheet, um, I think you said that Emmy Zavesky actually took the sheet off of him. That's correct. And you took the photographs in the different angles that we've seen. Um, As far as taking the, the photos of the, the different parts of the body and that sort of thing, was that something that you asked to be done or was that something Emmy's investigator would have asked you to do? That'll be something the investigator, the Emmy, he'll do a field exam. Right. We'll go through a, uh, he'll go through the exam looking for, you know, injuries on, on the seating. Okay. And then he would just say, hey, photograph this and I'll do so. All right. And, uh, and we see in some of those pictures of Cooper, it appears there's something underneath him. Looks looks like the white sheet, frankly. But do you recall what was put underneath him? We got to take those photographs. He was a uh, sheet was moved, okay. and a uh, I don't recall if Investigator Jackson put another sheet or disaster bag underneath him okay. a, uh, before we started photographing that. But he brought out extra sheets and a disaster bag, and body bag. Okay. And uh, were you made aware that at least two people had well? One person had pulled Cooper out of the car initially. Were you aware of that when you got there? I was not aware. Okay. And were you aware that at least that person, one other person, and maybe some police officers attended CPR on Cooper? I, I wasn't aware of that until after the fact. Okay. And, uh, but you were aware of seeing the Emmys investigator moving Cooper's body around, picking him up, putting him on the sheet, holding him up, moving him around. That's correct. Pulling the clothes here and there. That's right. correct. And, uh, and then you indicated that there was a, uh, you could smell uh, the urine from the diaper, I think you said, is that right? It, to me it smelled like hot, sweaty, the urine, like a dirty diaper smell. Hot, sweaty. Right. And, uh, and that's as you're 
you're down there next to Cooper taking photographs and that sort of thing. That's correct. And um, you didn't note that detail in your report. Correct. What the, the in smell? In smell. Mm -hmm. To me it was unremarkable. Okay, unremarkable. Um, and as you uh, sit here today, that's one of the first things you testified about, correct? To? To the smell. I just answered your, your question. I know when Mr. Evans was asking you earlier. That's you recall correct. that? Okay. And um, did anyone ask you about that uh, before you came to testify? Asked me if I had smelled a smell? Uh huh. I, that was later on oh. during this was brought up. And I believe in passing it was asked, you know, but it was outside. It was, it was, yeah, I smelled a dirty diaper, but you know, it was <coughs> unremarkable to me that when I was down there, it was something that I didn't, you know, wouldn't make note of. I was just, it's a baby, it's a toddler, we have a wet diaper. Okay. And do you remember who it was who in passing mentioned this to you? I, I don't recall. Do you remember, was that a police officer? That was probably so. Was it one of your superiors? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, was it one of the detectives in the case? Uh, then again, I don't recall. It's been two years ago. So. All right. Do you recall when they asked you about that? Then again, I don't recall. It's been a couple years. So. Okay. But you never made a report of it, correct? About the smell? Correct. No, I've never made a report of it. When you went to the, how long would you say you were out there on the scene at Acres Mill to do all your documenting? If I had a copy of my report, I can refresh you on the time I got there and the time I left to go to the uh, uh, treehouse, Home Depot treehouse corporate office. Do you want me to, do you have it with you? <coughs> no, no. I think this is the one that's referring to. It's not on point. So for about two hours. And um, did you just finish up and just kind of hanging around when you got the new task or did they, were you in the process of still kind of doing what you were doing and they said, hey, got another place you want you to go to? No, it was immediately. Go finish breaking down the scene. The uh, medical investigator removed the body from the scene. A, uh, I broke down the uh, tent, the barrier, yeah. and it was go to the next scene, go to photograph that. Were you there when Cooper's body was removed from the scene? Yes. All right. And uh, you didn't assist in that yourself, I presume? No. Okay. And um, they were to put him in, I think you referred to it as a disaster bag. Was right. There. Uh, Investigator Jackson, just, he picked the child up in the bag or in the sheet with the bag on there, and then they placed it in the bag. All right. And um, were you there when the car was removed from the scene? No, I wasn't. I okay. was already in route to the... But you had already done all the painting around the tires and that sort of thing to know where it was. That's correct. All right, and as you were taking those photographs, uh, particularly of the, let's see here, looking inside the car, <coughs> there we go. All right, starting with, looks like stage 27. Um, this is you standing in the doorway looking down at the driver's, passenger, driver's seat, correct? That's correct. And uh, you're telling us you, you're standing right in the doorway, but you're not actually getting inside the car itself. That's correct. Right. And um, look at that next group. And it, frankly, when you see the car seat here, you can see the top part of the car seat, is that right? That's correct. But you're not able to see down into the car seat? That's correct. And this is as you're standing there inside the door frame with your head below the roof, taking a picture of it, correct? That's correct. Stakes 28, again, you're, you're kind of squared up, if you will, against the car in the door frame. And um, again, you're able to see the top of the car seat here, but not down into the car seat, correct? That's correct. And again, you're, you're not above the roof of the car, you're 
where your head is and where your line of sight is is below the roof. Right. Page 29, same? Correct. Page 30, you're still in the door frame. You're maybe turned a little bit to the left. The angle of it at least looks like we're turned a little bit and you're taking a picture to kind of show the floor mats in the front or front part of the car, correct? Correct. And uh, you can't even see the car seat at all from that photograph, correct? Not from that vantage point. This stage 31, I think you said, and I think maybe the next one, these were taken from outside the car. Even though stage 31, 32, looking at it, looks really clear. That must be something you learned at one of your classes, how to take a good picture through the glass. That's correct. And I think you said you did that because you didn't want the glare of the glass interfering with your picture. That's correct. And when you say the glare of the glass, meaning because of the, the, the lighting conditions that you might not be able to actually see through the window well, <coughs> even though you're using a good camera? Right, I mean, light reflective. So light reflects off glass, of course it's going to get a reflection of you in it and whatever else is around you. It's there just you done go. that way so you can see it clearly. And although this is a hot day, you indicated there's actually thunderstorms rolling in that you were there, correct? That's when you put the tent over it. That worked. And, uh, and I don't know if we can see the clouds. You see the clouds and the reflection there of your stage 31 a little bit. Are you able to see that from where you are? Yeah. You're a very good picture taker. Thank you. It would be fair to just ask you that. I'm just going to take that, okay? Um, so as you went around, uh, let's, let's go back here. Stage 35, this is one where now you've turned at an angle to look toward the back seat. Okay. We can actually, you can see the car sheet and actually at least down to the other side of it. Correct. Uh, which would be the, I guess, the left-hand side of the car seat as the child would be sitting in, correct? Correct. And again, you're, you're below the roof, pointing your camera directly at that position, correct? That's, that's correct. You were asked about where the car seat was. The car seat was not sitting right there between the driver's seat and the passenger seat, was it? No, it was in the back seat in the center. And you said there's maybe an inch or two inches between the car seat itself and the back of the front seats, correct? That's correct. How much longer should it have been like? Uh, I still got to get to the residence and that sort of thing, so it would be a few minutes if you want to pray this. Good, well, good place. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to know if it's a good place for you. It is, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take our lunch recess. Closure, uh, not bad, speaking up the mic. Don't discuss this case at all. Y'all have a good lunch. Just watch your stuff going down.